okay welcome to all so today we are going to discuss a very important topic called power factor corrections so today in our mainly this is for the domestic domestic home appliance because today we are using ac fridge a microwave LED lights mainly where the DC power is required because in between there will be some rectifier and DC to DC converters all these things it will be there so this will drastically reduce the power quality okay that power factor mainly it will be poor and this will uh, increase the reactive power which will be pushed to the grid and we will be experiencing the penalty for that so there are various type of types of loads are there a b c d so based on this this um, we have to uh, take care how to increase the improve the power factor okay otherwise it will incur heavy penalty so there are several methods there will be active and passive methods passive methods is very simple because power factor will will be poor when the input voltage and current they are not will be in phase there is some phase lag or it is it is not in same phase so that will that will cause the uh, reactive power basically power factor is the measurement of the active power okay so if it is you know cos zero if the voltage if, if, if the phase angle between voltage and current is zero then cos zero is one so all the powers are active power only say it is 60 degree for example the angle between voltage and current then your active power will be cos component cos 60 and remaining that a 30 degree it will for that it will uh, that will generate uh, reactive power okay so whenever we are working with power always we should to improve the power factor we should always consider that we have to do some arrangement in between in between the uh, source and the load so that the input because we are consuming the power from the grid okay so during this ac to dc conversion and uh, based on the nature of the load what will happen the input voltage and current they will be not in phase there will be some non-linearity so we have to do in between you have to do some arrangement so that this input voltage and current will be in same phase this only we have to do using some some method so if you if we use some inductor so naturally these things it will improve but you know we are our power frequency is 50 hertz very low so in such case your sizing of the inductor and all these things it will be very bulky <clears throat> instead of that if, if we use some uh, power electronics converters high frequency switching devices so this will be much more convenient we can achieve the same thing with a very small form factor of the device <clears throat> so we are going to discuss that today i am not going for the simulation or the practical implementation i am just going to explain the concept then in the success subsequent lectures we will be doing the simulation as well as how to implement the controller in a control how to implement the control in microcontroller 
first you know about a simple comparator even though all you know but still whenever i will be teaching you i will be starting from the basics means the, the scratch so in the comparator there will be two terminal one positive and the negative so if the voltage in the negative terminal is lesser than the positive terminal then we will get one high output and if the voltage in negative terminal it will be higher than the positive terminal then you will get zero this is basically simply this so you see in the positive terminal i given 100 volt and the negative terminal i given 90 volt so in this case You see, in this case, we are getting <coughs> output high. Similarly, if I increase it, say 110, then what will happen? You see, in that case, it is zero. So at once, so this is the basically the function of the comparator. Okay. So we will be using basically two comparators and multiplier, two comparators and multiplier in the um, control circuit so we will now elaborate that say this is my rectifier sorry so this is my rectifier in that rectifier it is a simple uncontrolled diode rectifier so here input ac is converted to dc so this is your single phase 230 volt ac line okay so here in this across these two terminal you will get a rectified is it's a full wave it is like this this is the this is your voltage wave form and here will be some DC to DC converter. Again, this is a DC to DC converter. So PWM, uh, sorry, uh, uh, switching mode converter, or something like that. Based on that, based on the power rating of the device. Say here, some LED lights are connected. LED lights. Okay. So for that. You have to again because 230 volt AC when directly it is converting to DC it will give something voltage around again a 200 volt or something 210 volt or something RMS sorry DC DC value DC voltage so that LED will work say 12 volt or 13 volt like our uh, smart TV all these things it will work in 12 volts so further you need SMPS to convert that DC to a 12 volt again that switching and all these things it will be there so in this condition if you see the input current so here the whatever the current drawn so that will be it will be say like this you can simulate and check now you see <coughs> this is highly nonlinear in nature it should follow the same the current waveform should follow the same volt this means what I mean to say the voltage and current should be in same phase like instead of this red line if it is like this if it is like this then definitely the power factor will be increased so how to do that how to achieve that so for that one convenient te technique is so basically here you we can see from this we can understand the current is not in phase with the voltage so we need to increase the current so whenever current is low we need to increase it okay 
so that's why we are introducing one boost converter in between so what is that simple very simple here is one inductor then there will be one diode then this is the filter capacitor DC filter capacitor <coughs> and in between one switch is there so this switch name is S1 so now you see whenever whenever the switch is off then the no problem that rectifier output is directly fed to the DC to DC converter but say my current is less it is not not in phase with the voltage waveform that time I need to increase the current so to increase the current if I switch on the switch on the S1 switch what will happen the current will flow through the inductor it will increase the current okay so my job is done so whenever I will see that my current is not in phase with my voltage waveform that time only I will increase I will switch on the switch S1 and it will eventually normally it will increase the current and it will try to follow the voltage stress this only we need to do so for that here I will be using one comparator so in the comparator negative terminal in comparator negative terminal I will be taking the voltage feedback from here that is the DC bus voltage and here in the positive terminal I will give the reference voltage because my DC to DC converter this DC to DC converter it needs a fixed voltage if the voltage input of this DC to DC converter is fluctuating then my load characteristics load will not perform properly will not get the optimal performance of my load so my first requirement is to keep the DC bus voltage constant based on my load so for that we are setting the reference now what should be this comparator output if my DC bus voltage is lesser than my reference voltage then the comparator output will be high or one <coughs> okay and if my DC bus voltage is equal or less than the reference voltage then this comparator this you say this is comparator one so the comparator one output will be low simple as as we have seen so that means this comparator will give output high only when the DC bus voltage is lesser than my requirement then here I will use one AND operation or the multiplication you can take multiplication what will multiply we will sense the here we will sense the current the inductor current that will multiply okay and <coughs> this is so basically this is my inductor current when my s1 is off you can you can assume so the inductor current so here i am using one more comparator that is comparator 2 sorry so that is comparator 2 and this connection is like this and I am sensing the current here this current I am giving here okay and this output this comparator output 
it is going to get driver and switching this s1 okay you can consider this is comparator too now you can understand my circuit is complete now you can understand so once my dc bus voltage is less than my reference voltage that time this comparator output is comparator one output will be high and that is multiplied with with my inductor current okay and that is going to another comparator and whenever this input current is needed to be enhanced increased that time my switch s1 should be in uh, close and if this current if this current is lesser than this current then only this comparator output will be high and the switch will be close once the switch is closed my current will increase that i need and once is once current increasing in turn my voltage also will increase so this will further increase the dc bus voltage and once it is crossing the reference voltage then again this output will be zero if this output is zero then multiply it with this signal it will be zero again so that time this switch will be off so this action will be happening in every cycle every switching instant and exactly we will be able to achieve the input current which will be following the input voltage trend so if we are able to do these things then the input voltage and current will be in phase and definitely we will be able to enhance the power quality as well as the power factor so basically this is the concept be behind the active power factor correction so these are the hardware this is a very simple hardware and this we will be simulating we will be simulating in some software like pcm or matlab then the same thing we will be implementing in microcontroller that also i will continue in my subsequent lectures so this is a, this was a very simple explanation and hope i i am able to uh, give you the glimpse of that thank you so much thanks for your patience